Thank you for being here. If you're new, I especially want to say thank you. Today is Scout Sunday, so we celebrate the Scouts this morning, and uh, we'll have a presentation a little bit later and, and uh, let the Scouts talk a little bit about what they're, what, what's going on in this, the Scout Troop. All right, let's, uh, Barrett, I invite you to, uh, to lead us in the call to worship. <clears throat> Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> we have gathered to have our vision of God rekindled, our spirits refreshed and renewed, our courage strengthened, and our purpose in life clarified and affirmed. We gather to celebrate as a community of caring and courageous people in the spirit of Christ. Eileen, they gave me notes. These are great. Dear, dear Pastor Rusty, you always believe in God and Jesus, and you are funny, kind, helpful, and smart. I chose those words because you do wonderful prayers. Love, Nora. I'm going to keep that and put that in my special place there. Pastor Rusty, I like the prayers about Jesus and God. And you're a, you're a pretty good storyteller. And you're nice. That's a good one, too. I'll keep that. This morning, we uh, are going to take just a few minutes to recognize the scouts and the scouting uh, history here at the church. And so I'm going to ask... Um, the scout leaders to come forward. Kay and Shannon and Rich, if you'll come forward at this point in time. The scouts, one of the first things that I saw when I, I got here to the church about uh, seven months ago now is that they took me on a tour around the, the church and I noticed this board that's over there by the back door 
and it has all the Eagle Scouts who become Eagle Scouts in this church uh, over the, was it 63 years? It's some 65 years. And so there's been many, many Eagle Scouts and people who've been involved in the scouting uh, uh, organization over these, over these years. And so this morning, I am uh, happy to be able to uh, give three uh, awards out called the Cross and Flame Awards to these three folks, Shannon and Kay and Rich. And it feels like these are like um, the Olympic medals or something. I get to put them around your neck. Here, there. That's a gold medal, I'm going to tell you. And I'm sure it feels like a gold medal after the, the hours that you spend here at church and helping with the, the kids. So, um, this is just a little bit of the information. And I'm sure that I have misplaced my piece of paper. So, Shannon, I want you to come up and just give just a short, brief kind of introduction about yourself and how you work with the, the crew, okay? Um, I'm originally from Ohio. I was very involved in Girl Scouts um, growing up. And when I moved to U I moved to Utah with my family in 2014, we got involved with a Cub Scout pack here at Christ United Methodist Church and just fell in love with it. There was a huge boom of kids coming into the pack, young kids, and so I volunteered to be a den leader, and I currently serve as the bear den leader, um, and I really enjoy it, and we really appreciate what your congregation does for our boys. Thank you so much. So uh, my name is Kay Poulton Tim. I am the committee chair for the Cub Pack 3410. Um, I started in this position three years ago. I knew nothing. I mean nothing about scouts. So it's been a really steep learning curve. But I have met such amazing people, um, and our pack has grown from 30 to 50 cubs, 53 cubs actually this year. Um, so we're really excited about um, everything that um, scouting has to offer, and just. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, I'm Rich Hamp. I'm actually originally from Idaho, grew up on a small farm up there, uh, moved to Utah at an early age, uh, went through my own scout troop up in Ogden Troop 202, where I got my eagle, and also got my interest in scouts. And then when my son Desmond uh, became of age to become a scout. We enrolled in this scout troop uh, and have been here uh, in this troop ever since. I, I currently hold the position of committee chair for Troop 410. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Now, the scouts, you, you probably might not know some of the things that the scouts do around the, the building. But uh, on Christmas time, one of the examples is at Christmas time, they, they put up luminaria uh, up on top of the church and then down below and uh, have, have done that. And then downstairs, if you, if you want to go downstairs afterwards, you're welcome to do that. They are building uh, essentially a kind of a, I would call it like a lob cabin feel down in the room that they used to have their equipment. So that will be kind of where the Cub Scouts will meet and organiza the organization will have meetings. And so we've given them another room down there and uh, they, they've, they've done that and over the years have uh, given the church a number of different kinds of gifts. And so this morning they, they have a couple of, of gifts that they wanted to give to the church and so I will give you these and you can, Shannon has yours. You're welcome. If you guys want to just talk a little bit about that, that would be great. So earlier this year, you heard uh, a testimonial about scouting uh, from one of uh, the parishioners here, and it, it was a really touching story um, about how scouting really built camaraderie with, um, with, within the structure and, um, and bringing in new, new cubs and welcoming them um, is really our primary goal um, of, of the scouting program. So 
as I, as I said, I've worked with some pretty amazing leaders, so I just wanted to highlight a few of them because they're here today. So you've met Shannon. She's uh, uh, one of our great leaders for the Bear Den. We have uh, Scott Carpenter. So raise your hand, Scott. He's already standing. Um, he is working with our We Below Twos, and they're getting ready to bridge over. We have 12 that are going to bridge over into uh, the scouting program. So we're, we're excited about that. And then really, it does take a village. <laughs> with 40 scouts or with 50 uh, plus scouts. So we have a great committee that, that works on that. We have Kelly Carpenter, who's um, on our committee. She's our advancement chair. And then Chris Tim, who's hiding behind um, the pillar over there. Um, he's uh, my husband, as well as an Eagle Scout. He's the one that knows all about scouting, not me. But um, I'm learning. And um, he is a, an assistant uh, Cub Master. So we're just happy happy to have that. And if you've been here on Monday nights, you know that this is just organized chaos to get 50 Scouts um, in their dens, learning um, what they need to learn, and then off, off into the world doing great things. Um, so... As Robert Baden Powell said, whom if you don't know who he was, which I didn't three years ago, he is uh, the originator of the scouting program. He said, the spirit is there in every boy. It has to be discovered and brought to light. And as the committee chair for PAC 3410, we have um, this small token of our appreciation we'd like to present to Pastor Rusty and to um, you as a congregation. Are you, are you gonna shake my hand? Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, and just thank you for being our sponsor um, and for allowing us to use these amazing facilities. And it's just phenomenal that this program has been around for over 60 years. That's a testament to you as the support, really providing that underlying support for the overall scouting structure. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi again. <clears throat> you know, uh, every year I, I get to address uh, this body as the committee chair, and I have to admit it's full of a little bit of intrepidation uh, trying to get prepared to uh, address a, a church congregation in front of them. Um, it's always a chance to lose that much more of your dignity in front of a large audience. This year, though, I, I uh, came a little bit more prepared uh, thanks to a colleague at work that I went to coffee with uh, this last Monday. And uh, we had both uh, come over from the Attorney General's office to uh, the District uh, Attorney's office, and we were talking about people that we both mutually knew uh, from our prior experiences at the Attorney General's office. And uh, she was describing uh, one of her bosses who I had really had not recognized or wasn't clicking with me as to who this was. And I says, well, can you tell me a little bit more about him? Would you mind uh, describing him so maybe I, you know, saw him and just didn't know it? And uh, she looked at me and she says, well, he was short like you. Um, he, he wasn't so heavy set, <clears throat> And he didn't have gray hair. And, you know, while she was describing this other person, it actually uh, impacted me. I thought, you know, she, she's actually just described me as being short, fat, and bald, or short, fat, and old. So I really don't have much dignity left to lose this morning. Um, what I did want to do, though, is thank uh, Rusty, this entire congregation, and this church for what you give the scouts. And you give us a sense of community every time we walk through these doors. Uh, our scout troop is a varied scout troop, and you support us all. We've got several different religions recognized within the troop. Yet when our troop leaders and our scouts walk through these doors, they all become a part of this community. We've forgotten any religious differences we may have, we have all become scouts. We've all become dedicated as leaders to making sure that our boys, as they journey into adulthood, complete that journey successfully and with the tools that they need in order to become fine young men. We are so proud that this church 
has given us that opportunity and continues to give with the gift of more space downstairs that uh, Rusty has uh, mentioned. Uh, it is just fantastic to, to see where the, where the church has helped the scout troop to go forward. And we look forward to uh, gr great things in the future. We also want to invite all of you to come to any scout meeting or scout activity at any point in time. Uh, we also have a small gift to, to present your pastor, as well as another little bit of a gift that we would like to do because of the sense of community you have offered us, we would like to offer to the congregation through Rusty a sense of membership in the scout troop. And Fred, who is our scout leader, is here to make uh, Rusty a scout. <laughs> First off, I have to uh, take care of some old uh, Shriner business. I'd like to introduce my wife, Melanie, for those that don't know her, so I don't have to buy her a dress. Um, that's a <laughs> tradition there. Um, additionally, um, I too want to thank this congregation, this church. I grew up in this church. Um, the neckerchief I wear is an eagle neckerchief from Troop 410, 1973. And uh, it's really funny because I moved away to Tennessee, came back, got married in this church. We moved to Sandy. We were in the church down there. And then we moved back to Holiday, and we're back again. And I don't think, as my wife said, we'll ever move again. Uh, or at least she won't. Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, some of the things, yes, we're, we're working downstairs, and the luminaries were a a real challenge to uh, make them, and they'll be up every year because they're uh, commercial grade, electrified. Um, other things we're doing is we're gonna be installing uh, additional lighting downstairs uh, in some of the new areas that they're working on. And uh, we're gonna be uh, repairing the uh, paint on the uh, uh, elevator doors and siding because we found a way to uh, sand it off and get it back to the stainless, which will save the church about $15,000, and the scouts will be doing that. Um, so anyway, it's all part of family and community, and you are part of our family. Now, Rusty, yes, we want to make him a scout. Now, um, that means that he is committed every Monday night. Um, <laughs> secondly, He's going to have to get up really early um, Sunday morning so that he can drive back from the campouts to be here for church. <laughs> That's after he does church in the Wildwoods. So, uh, But uh, we really appreciate Rusty um, and the uh, staff. Um, additionally, we support all that you've done, uh, allowing us to even have our fundraiser of the Buffalo Barbecue since 1961. And this, this troop is part of this church. It's part of its life. We're probably second oldest to the uh, choir, having started in 1946, even before this building. So it's, it's part of us, and, and, and hopefully we're part of you. Um, now, Rusty, we have your application. That you'll have to come on Monday night to sign. Everything else is done and paid for. But <laughs> we at least want to... Uh, Give you the new T-shirts from the troop Great. for the Thundering Herd. And on the sleeve is the Methodist cross and flame with Christ Methodist on it. So oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. We do have a rank board um, that has all the scouts and their different ranks. So. Uh, uh, Barrett just said, are we putting him on there? Well, he's already on the committee board as the uh, head of the organization. But, uh, yeah, we can put him on there. Where do you think we ought to put him, Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you.
I'm going to turn it over uh, back to the chancel choir. You have a special piece of music this morning. Please join me in the unison prayer. God of wholeness, we so easily set ourselves apart from each other. We build walls of difference and barriers of fear. Yet we long for wholeness, for healing and deep meaning in each life. Teach us ways of being with each other, which lift all our spirits. Enable us to care for people who are not like us, and yet who have dreams that are so similar to ours. Refresh us and strengthen us in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite us to take a moment of silent prayer. God, we are grateful for this church that welcomes children and youth as part of the community. From the Wesley Bellringers to the Scouts to the Faith on Fire to the youth group, we see how important these young lives are and we pray that what we do here makes a difference to them. God, we bring all the joys and concerns of a, a week's worth of living to this moment. We place it here. And we pray for peace as we 
think about the things we've done and the things we've yet to do. So help us clarify to us our lives in this place and time. This we pray in the name of the one who came and spoke healing words to the people of his time and who taught his disciples and us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus.
We have this uh, embarrassment of riches in this church, don't we? With these young people who have such talent that they're willing to give and share with us. What a gift. What a gift that is. Thank you, Fanny. In, in the first line of her song, as I looked it up, I, I, I had to see and it talks about the great unknown and then finding you in the mystery. Talking about finding you in the mystery. And so my, my, my sermon title is Encountering Mysteries. And it was about this story of the transfiguration. And uh, in, in the Bible, as you go through it, as you go through the text, you will see these mysteries. Things that are so mysterious, so strange to us, they're outside of our normal experience and understanding. And so there's a pastor, his name was Peter Gomes. He was at Harvard Divinity School, and he said this about mystery. Mystery can often be that place in which we come to know better who God is and who we are in the mystery. Mysteries to be known must be entered into, for we do not solve mysteries we enter into them, and the deeper we enter into them, the more illumination we get. Still greater depths are revealed to us the further we go. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we come with complex questions about life, about the things that we go through. We hope to find answers. We hope even to have the right questions. And so we pray that today, through this worship experience that we've had, we may come to experience and contemplate the mystery of all being and of life once more, and to ready ourselves for the living of these days. Amen. So I, I, I know that we're, we're kind of at the end of uh, the service, and, and uh, the words that I would share with you about the transfiguration, this story that comes right before we enter into to Ash Wednesday and Lenten, the Lenten season, are simply this. There are stories in the Bible, I think, that are there to direct our attention 
to simply shift our focus and let us know that the people who came after Jesus, the people who wrote these stories, whether it's in Matthew or Mark or Luke, they simply wanted us to know there is this special, un, almost unbelievable thing about this person. And some of the stories that they share with us are almost unbelievable. Like the Holy Spirit coming down at Jesus' baptism, alighting on his shoulder like a dove, and a word that they hear from the heavens. Listen to him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The same way that on the Mount of Transfiguration, they hear the word again, listen, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. So we are aware, as if for a new moment, a new time, look, there are stories and the things that he does and shares and, and tells, these are things that we should take into us deeply and it will change us and help us be the people who we can become. I don't know what kind of mystery you live in each day. It seems like I'm living from one moment to another and mystery doesn't come to, into play very much. But sometimes in these moments, when we hear the music that we hear, when we see young people growing up to become these lovely adults, we stop for a moment and we realize in the living of our days, these special moments and things happen. If we simply stop to ponder that each day, just for a moment, we will see how much richer and deeper life is. Yes? Amen. Let's end with singing this uh, song from the faith we sing. It's a song called Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory. It was written by a man named Tom Troger, who just happened to be my professor of worship uh, back a number 25, 30 years ago. I invite us to stand as we're able. Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory it tells about this experience of James, Peter, James, and John.
Uh, thank you for uh, coming today. And if uh, you see one of the scouts or Fane or any of the Wesley Bell Ringers or Lewis who uh, shared his music with us at, during the offering, I invite you to, to go to them and say how much you appreciate them. Peace be with you, friends. We'll see you next Sunday.